Welcome to Sewing Report Live. I'm Jen. We are in for a fun and hopefully interesting show tonight. Welcome wherever you're watching. We are talking about drama. Yes, drama. We've got a couple other things on the agenda as well. And that's kind of what I wanted to get into is, is there too much drama in the sewing community? But we'll, we'll kind of let people flow in. I know we're just getting started. It is Sunday note. Hope everyone is well. Let me get to the comment section. But no, we're just kicking things off. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because it's something that's kind of been on my mind. I've thought about this every once in a while and I'm like, do I want to talk about it? Do I not want to talk about it? I don't know. Oh, and before we get started, I do want to give a quick shout out to tonight's live stream sponsor, The Sewing Report Etsy Shop. Guys, this channel is not monetized. I am trying to get there. I need 1,000 subscribers and quite a bit of watch time. We're, we're getting there though. But that's why this uh, live stream is sponsored by my Etsy shop where you can find fabric, sewing supplies, and some handmade items. I do have some fabric bundles on sale this month. Got some really cool new Sew Tights products, lots of fabric. We've got thread, we've got needles. I'm trying to add more to the shop. I've got lots of marking tools. So check out the Etsy shop if you have not already. Every little bit helps uh, put on shows like this, especially when your channel is not monetized and uh, you're doing it for free. So thank you in advance. But yes, this live stream is sponsored by the Sewing Report Etsy shop for all of your fabric and sewing supplies needs. So let's talk about this. Now I have been in involved in the sewing community, community probably for about 10 years. And there are a lot of people in it. I think it, it, a lot of it I would say is on Facebook and Instagram. If I'm being honest, it seems like a lot of the, a lot of the social interaction takes place on those two social media platforms. And the sewing community can mean a lot of different things. Obviously there are local communities of people doing like sewing circles or maybe like quilting groups, that type of thing. There's also, you know, again, there are bloggers, there are YouTubers like me, there are influencers, there are people who are just friends in real life. And I think the internet has really taken the sewing community to different places and introduced some, some benefits, but also some disadvantages, I would say, or some negatives, because I feel like the internet has really opened up uh, pretty much every space into into some level of toxicity, if, if you get what I'm saying here. So I wanna talk about that because I do think it's becoming an issue and it seems like I'm, you know, every week there's like something, there's some drama, you know, there's like people mad at a company, they're mad at a, like a person, they're mad at somebody for making some sort of mistake. And I think this is a very unhealthy thing for the sewing community, if I'm being honest. And it's something that even as someone who's obviously involved in the sewing community quite a bit in terms of being on YouTube. It's something that I'm like, I'm kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? So, all right, let's, all right. Oh, we got one comment. All right, let's, let's take a moment to read this comment. We've got Lakisa M. Hello, hello. I feel like the sewing community is so large. It's kind of hard to notice drama unless you're following that actual group. And that is a really good point because sometimes I think, yeah, like if you're part of that particular a corner of the internet, then you're like, oh my gosh, it's everywhere. But if you're not, like, if you don't go on Instagram, if you're not on Facebook, you might not like see it, you know what I mean? So maybe I, I've been noticing more and more stuff just because I think of some of the places I tend to uh, look at. Uh, for instance, okay, so the first, ex so I do lurk on a couple subreddits. There's a website called Reddit I would say it's like one of the worst places on the internet because people are just like, people are just, like the level of negativity on Reddit is like next level stuff, guys. And there are two subreddits in particular that I do occasionally lurk in, uh, but I never post in and I never comment because it's just too, I feel like it's just too much of like a toxic waste up. And they're, they're called uh, cr like a, craft snark and then there's bitch eating crafters and that literally is what it is is people who are just like 
oh my gosh, did you see what so-and-so is doing? Or, oh my gosh, I can't believe this company is doing this. Or, oh my gosh, I really hate, I really hate sewing YouTubers or I hate sewing podcasts or whatever. And all it is is people just literally bitching about other people on the internet. And it's like, okay. Now, you're probably like, okay, Jen, well, why do you even go to those uh, places on the internet? You know, you don't have to. And no, I don't have to. And that's kind of why I just lurk in them. I don't ever post or comment because the minute you do, you can't say anything right in those spaces. Like for real, you cannot say um, anything right. So that like, I do sometimes get some uh, like ideas. I will say this, it's sometimes you can get ideas for like where the pulse is. Like if a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, like I've seen a lot of posts on there even recently about Craftsy and how uh, Craftsy has uh, charged somebody's credit card after they already canceled their membership. And that's something I've talked about in the past as well. So sometimes I do get some insight from going to those places that almost makes up for the like crazy level of negativity there. But sometimes, guys, it's a little bit like hard to take. Uh, so also like every... There's like a post every day there on somebody accusing like a, a, des, a like a pattern designer accusing another pattern designer of copying their design. And I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that was a thing. So like I've kind of learned about stuff I didn't know about, things like that. And that tends to take place with a lot of uh, knitting designers. But there have been some sewing pattern designers that apparently have been throwing shade at like other indie pattern designers for like allegedly copying their design. And again, I don't know. Like, I just don't know about that. And especially when the design is kind of a basic design, like, are you really like, yeah, somebody may have come up with one, you know, boxy dress pattern, but is a boxy dress pattern really that original of a design in the first place? Like, probably not. So I don't know, there's that sort of thing. I've also seen, like, I kind of had to step away from a lot of the sewing and quilting Facebook groups because I felt like, you know, I feel like on the internet people are just looking to get angry about something or looking to get upset. And I think that can kind of be exacerbated when you get groups of people. And I'm not just, I am not just limiting this to sewing and quilting groups. I think this can happen in any space, no matter what it is. I've seen it happen in photography groups, videography groups, social media influencer type groups. And I think this can, you know, so certainly it's not just limited to sewing people, but it certainly is something that happens within these uh, spaces. So, okay. All right, we got Denise G. Thank you, Denise. As you report on industry news, it makes sense you would check those out. Yeah, and I have gotten some ideas of things that I think would be important to talk about if a lot of people are chiming in about it. You know, I like to know what's going on, but at the same time, you can, it can get really like, it can get, you can, it can get really depressing real fast if you get my drift here. So I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like, you kind of can't escape it, but you kind of want to escape it. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of this on Instagram too, where people, um, I don't know, like, I've seen people kind of dog pile onto something. Like, if one person gets mad about something and posts about it, then everyone else kind of just jumps on the bandwagon and then just starts to also uh, go after a person, a company, like, whatever it is, group of people, and people will start, like, fighting. And I, I don't know, I'm kind of... I will say this, that's kind of one reason why I am... You know, again, I've been in this space for about a decade. I feel like I kind of like to not get involved in groups because of the tendency of things to spiral like that. So I don't know what you guys think, but let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this on the replay. But do you feel like there is too much drama in the sewing and quilting spaces? Like, and that's the thing. I think that's something, you know, we could, we could have a discussion on, like, some people might say yes, some people might say no, but I have seen many, many situations over the years where like every, okay, so let's, here's a couple examples. And again, I think there are some valid, 
Like there are certainly valid situations where calling a company out or uh, bringing certain issues to attention of more people is a good thing. Uh, for instance, um, like um, for instance, like when we kind of were all talking about Cricket and their policy change that a lot of customers were upset about. I think that's a valid thing that people were speaking up about because it affects people. There was definitely a lot of backlash against the company and I thought it was warranted. And you know, I think in situations like that, speaking up is a is a good thing, especially when it especially when it's something that affects a large group of people and it has to do with something like again, a product they bought you know, again, something like that, or if there's issues with like, you know, uh, like a pattern company or something like that. I, I definitely, I'm not saying like never speak up about anything or never rock the boat. Uh, certainly not, because I think there are a lot of situations uh, where that is, uh, you know, certainly something that we need to be talking about. Also, a lot of people have watched, you know, when I did the video a few years ago talking about why I decided to, um, not renew my Craftsy subscription. A lot of people watch that video and I went, I've been, I get comments on that video all the time from people saying that they canceled their membership and their credit card is continuing to be charged. That is a real consumer issue. That's something that I think people need to be aware about because like if you're telling people about something kind of sketchy with a company or a scam or you know, something where uh, again, a large group of people are affected, but then there's also like person to person drama too. And it's like, when do you want to like bring that up? Um, so a couple examples I can think of um, where I, I want to just bring up some examples of just sort of like the mob mentality. All right. So a few years ago, th there is, there was like kind of a snafu with uh, QuiltCon. QuiltCon is an organization that puts on an event um, every year uh, for quilters, they have a quilt show, there's a competition. And a few years ago, QuiltCon released like a blog post about um, their policy on what they called uh, derivative works. So basically they were trying to like create some sort of rules or uh, guidance for people making quilts that were you know, based on someone else, like kind of an inspired by works. Like if it was sort of like a copy of another popular uh, quilter style or something they learned, a technique they learned from another quilter. And they were putting in place some policies on what QuiltCon considered derivative works. And that just lit the community on fire. People were like melting down over it. They were just super angry at the QuiltCon people. And then the, it sparked like a lot of social media posts and just public outrage about the policy. And I could see both sides of the issue. I never weighed in on it publicly myself really because um, I didn't really have a strong opinion. I could sort of see both sides of it. And you could also say like, in terms of like copying someone else's work, in a way, I think with quilting and even with sewing patterns and everything like designs, nothing is really original anymore. So like if you're just making like a flying geese quilt and then someone else is like, oh my gosh, Jen copied my flying geese quilt. Like that's kind of ridiculous because the flying geese like quilt block is not an original idea. It's not like so-and-so designer came up with that specific idea because the flying geese quilt block has been around forever. So if someone today was like, oh my gosh, she copied me, they probably copied someone too. So, you know, I, I think there are situations where like calling someone out for copying you is a little bit like, okay. There are some instances where someone has a very, very distinct style, pattern, designs that truly are original, but like there are a lot that really like aren't. So I could definitely see why a lot of quilters were upset over this uh, derivative, derivative works uh, debacle. And I think they ended up walking some of it back, but it, there was just so much public backlash. And it was just one of those things where I felt like people were just looking to get outraged. They were looking to get upset. 
uh, some of them probably didn't even really know like why they were upset, but they were upset because, you know, and that's, I think, kind of a dangerous, a dangerous thing I see in these spaces is people be like, like, it's almost like, again, what it's like, it's like dominoes or it's like the mob once it's like a fire, you know, once it gets sparked, everyone kind of jumps on board. And, you know, some of them might not even be like really mad or upset about the certain issue, but they see everyone else getting upset about it. And they're like, oh my gosh, we all have to go after this organization or this person or blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Uh, so another example I do want to bring up, this is also, and I've noticed this a lot. Maybe it's just me, but I have noticed this seems to happen a lot in the quilting world. I'll just leave it at that. Um, about a year or so ago, uh, a woman I could, which by the way, she sent me a message and I forgot to write her back. I definitely need to. Uh, Mary Fonz, who is a very long time fixture in the quilting world. And her mother is Marianne Fonz, who's a very, pretty well-known, renowned uh, quilter. And Mary did a video on her YouTube channel called like Quilt Clothes Need to Die. And she was kind of criticizing people who get like perfectly good quilts and then cut them up to make like, you know, kind of clothing. And she had a really interesting, I think, critique on it. I, I could see different perspectives on it, but I certainly think it's an issue that is worth uh, talking about. And it's something that people have a very, very uh, strong opinion on. So she put out and she did have, now again, you could say like her title was really, really dramatic. You know, that's kind of the point with YouTube. Like, I'm sorry, but if you don't have, like, you're, like, people kind of understand if you, if people are going to watch the video, your title and your thumbnail needs to be pretty, like, I'm not saying it's clickbait, but the packaging needs to be as appealing to the audience you're trying to get as possible. So I don't blame her for calling the video quilt clothes need to die or whatever. Um, so she kind of got into... Like, now some of the items, yeah, some of the items she pointed out were kind of like, you're like, eh, I don't know about that. Um, and then she was also talking about, like, how in a way making quilt clothes could also be, like, kind of fast fashion. Like, people are jumping on a, a trend, but they don't really even like quilted clothes. They're just doing it because it's a trend. And then that item will also end up, you know, not being used. And there are, there are lots of different perspectives, but a lot of people attacked Mary. Like, it was kind of ugly. Uh, I thought it was pretty mean and kind of unnecessary. Like, yes, she had some strong opinions on the quilt clothes, uh, but just the way people came at her, and then people were also making all these, like, response posts on social media, mostly on Instagram, basically bashing her, bashing her opinions, and just uh, kind of tearing her apart for like why she was wrong and all of this stuff. And I just thought that was kind of like, I don't know, like very mean. It felt very mean girls to me. And then also people were, I think she also got some flack on the video because it, she did use um, some like photos and like material that she did not own in the video. Uh, like she used some, you know, photos of examples of quilt clothes now, again, I'm not going to get into the legal stuff with that because there, there's the whole fair use copyright issue. And that's a very nuanced, very complicated uh, topic. It's not for me to decide whether uh, her using those justifies this fair use. But I believe she also got some um, copyright claims on the video from people who are just like angry at her or whatever. But I think that's an example of the mob just like coming after somebody, you know, and it's like, if you were, here's my question. If you were in person, face to face with Mary, uh, some of the comments I saw about her, like online, were really like next level mean. And I don't know if those people would really say that to her face to face if if they were um, in real life. Uh, but I think the whole keyboard warrior thing is definitely kind of an issue. And I think it's very easy to write like really nasty stuff about the person when you don't actually have to look them in the face. Um, so I don't know, I really felt terrible for her. And, you know, I just, like, I think that's an example, again, even if you disagreed with Mary's video, 
I felt like a lot of the nasty comments I saw her about her were just completely unnecessary. And I, you know, and again, like it's a couple of years later, everyone's like forgotten about it. That's the thing. Like, it's like there's like an outrage of the week and then everyone like moves on and moves on to like the next thing and they forget about what happened um, the week before. So, all right, let's take a few moments and I'll read a couple comments. Okay, let me get some water too. I've right, got Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Rebecca's in the house. I definitely agree that uh, speaking up is needed, uh, especially if there are terms of service change. I also agree there can be a mean girls vibe in some groups. Exactly. And I've definitely seen that in, like, I've had to really step away from a lot of the sewing and quilting Facebook groups because I just felt like they were not positive places for me. Like, it was people like, everyone was always like complaining about something or like being like, oh my gosh, did you see so-and-so? Like how, like this is so terrible or whatever, you know what I mean? And I just, you know, I just didn't want to, like I, it was just too much. It's just like too much. All right, Denise, it's facts versus feelings. I generally stick to YouTube tutorials, love project-based ones. Exactly, and I think that's, um something you can do like I feel like the more you step away from social media in some regards the like the less you kind of have to like even know about drama and I, that can be a like a better way to go I feel like to a certain degree I kind of have to wade through those waters a little bit just so I know what's going on in the community or like the industry in general but yeah it's just it can be it can be tough okay all right, Lakisa, I'm new to the community, so I think the peacock dress is the only true drama I've seen. I don't even know about that one. Wow. But that was a valid thing to be upset about uh, to me. Yeah, and I think there are some, I've seen some situations, and again, I'm not, I really don't want to, for the most part, like, call anybody up by name. Again, I, I brought up the Mary thing because that was very, like, public, um, you know, and I, and I, I want to defend her because I think she's, I think she's a good person. I've had a lot of personal interaction with Mary and I, I thought like, I, you know, and I also saw people saying some really very mean things about her. Um, like, I'm not going to get into some of the mean comments, but like some really nasty comments that I just thought were, you know, completely unnecessary. Um, again and they were like really question they were kind of questioning her like quilting skills and stuff look i have met her in person i followed her i went to one of her classes in person mary knows how to quilt like just because her mother is no was known in the quilting industry before her does not mean that mary is lacking skills yes um mary did early on years ago she had a youtube series called quilty where she was kind of learning a lot of stuff on camera but I actually found that really relatable as a beginner quilter, seeing someone else who was kind of more on my level learn alongside um, me. Like, I, I, I thought that was really cool. And I don't think, I don't think you have to be a, like, an expert level quilter or an expert level sewist in order to participate in the sewing community or to be able to share um, knowledge. I am not an expert sewist at all. And, you know, I, and I, but I don't try, like, that's the thing. I'm not pretending to be. I'm like, hey, I love sewing. I'm a sewing enthusiast. I'm probably a mediocre, a skilled sewist, uh, but I'm here sharing what I know, you know, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I've also seen people like, now I've seen people who I think are kind of middle-aged or older um, bash younger influencers. Like they'll be like, oh my gosh, Look at all these 20 year olds who can barely sew and they, they have so many followers on social media. I'm going to be real with you. I think a lot of that is sour grapes. I think a lot of people are jealous of other people uh, in the sewing community, especially people who may have like a bigger following on social media. And you know what? Even though you may see like a 20 year old or a teenager uh, TikTok sewist, Yes, some of the content may be a little bit of, you know, you may be like, okay, that's kind of cringe. And I do think there are some things, I do think there are some things that we could do better in terms of social media content, but don't assume just because someone's new at sewing um, 
that they don't have anything to offer on social media. I think that's not true. So, but yeah, I've seen some, going back to what Lakisa said, I do think there are some, you know, there have definitely been some situations where it does look like a specific designer or an influencer was like outright copied. But I think there are a lot of other situations where they kind of seem like there's a lot of gray area there, if you know what I'm saying. For instance, I've done tutorials on like some real basic stuff. Like I've done like, again, I did a scarf tutorial. I've done bandanas, pillowcases, like, you know, pillow cover, pillowcases, uh, zipper pouches. And you know what? These things are basic AF and I'm not the one that invented the zipper pouch tutorial. I made a zipper pouch tutorial that I felt was easy for me to follow and I hope I wanted it to help other people. But if I went to like some other YouTuber that also did a zipper pouch tutorial and I was like, oh my gosh, shoot, she copied me. Like that's ridiculous. Like the zipper pouch has been around for a while. I did not invent it. This other person did not invent it. I think some things you just gotta, you just gotta let it go. All right. All right, Denise says, I like your reference of opinion opposed to feelings, gut reactions. Yeah, you know, and everyone has a different opinion, but I've, I've certainly seen people online being attacked for having an opinion. And yeah, it was just very like over, like people can get very over emotional. Um, even like stuff that like, you're like, okay guys, this is quilting, relax a little bit. Like, you know, I've, I've gotten comments on my videos of like people who were like really, really upset about like the way I did something or whatever. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, like, oh my gosh, you're doing it wrong. I'm like, look, just because it's not the way you do it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. You know what I mean? Like just, just putting that out there. All right. As a seasoned quilter sewist, I appreciate beginner videos talks. I still always learn at least one new thing and remember things I've forgotten. You know, and that's true. Like I don't, you know, I watch a lot of beginner sewing videos even now, you know, or tutorials or for anything, you know, like I just, I don't know. I just think, I, I also kind of see like kind of these two groups pitted together, like the newbies and then like the, the more like veteran sewists or the more veteran quilters. And, you know, I just, I feel like there's just a lot of unnecessary, like unnecessary tension or unnecessary like hate towards the other one. I don't know. So, all right, yes, it's quilting. We're not discussing foreign policy. Exactly, like, does it really matter that so-and-so does something a different way than you or may like, you know, like that's the thing. It, I think sewing and quilting is such a highly personal thing to do that if you find a way that works for you, you get the result you like and are happy with, like, does it really matter how you got there? And why is someone else gonna be like, well, I would have done it this way, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, come on guys, like, come on. I just, like, I'm so over that type of thing. I think it's really, I just think it's really like unnecessary. I'm gonna get some water real quick. So, but that's the thing, like, I, I just feel like there's something every week. It's like, we're mad at this pattern company because they did this, or we're mad at Joanne Fabrics because of this reason. And I feel like if you're, if you're the type of person that's always looking to get mad about something or get upset about something, maybe that's not like the healthiest thing to do. And the other thing I want to point out is that I think this type of neg negativity or like discord within a community, I... You know, again, Lakisa was saying she's new to the community. Like, how off-putting is that for new people? Like, if you if they go on Instagram and start following a bunch of people and then there's, like, some drama, you know, or they go in a Facebook group and everyone's fighting, like, I feel like that's kind of bad optics for us. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think that we could do... I do think there are a lot of areas that we as a community could improve and like just be more positive or like get along better. Like, I just feel like there's like, it's always, I swear guys, it's always something. It's just like always something. And I know I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired of it. You know, I'm kind of tired of it. You know, and like, and 
I'll, I'll, I'll share this from my perspective as well, is that I've, some of this stuff, like, just like the commute, you know, or like, like I, I've been, I've been a part of like a few smaller groups of people. And I feel like when you get into like organized, like, like, hey, we're like, we're going to have a group of like, you know, sewing influence or something. I've been a part of a few of those groups. And I can tell you from personal experience, they like never, like they never laugh. Like, in my opinion, it's pretty hard for those types of groups to have longevity. Um, there's always some like, you know, behind the scenes, you know, bullshit going on. People are talking about each other behind their backs. Like, uh, there's definitely some like weird jealousy stuff going on. Like, and that's been kind of off-putting to me to be a part of groups like that. So I really tend to like shy away. I really have really tried not, you know, I'm kind of a loner, you know, more of a lone, doing more of the lone wolf thing. Like I have some friends or people I talk to in the community uh, but I've really, you know, especially over the past couple of years, I've really gotten away from being a part of uh, groups. Like, I'm in a few, like, Facebook groups, again, for, like, more general stuff. But again, I kind of stopped following them. I'm not, guys, I'm even, like, barely on Facebook now. And the other thing I decided to do a few years ago was, like, I, I stopped, like, you know, I'm, I'm barely on Facebook as it is. I, I kind of have to follow like a few, like I have to follow my like homeowners association group just to know what's going on and stuff. And I do like message with people. Um, but just for my own sanity, I kind of stopped like adding sewing people as like personal Facebook friends. Um, just because like, I just didn't, you know, like I just, I just didn't want to be involved. Um, so it's been kind of like, it's been kind of tough and it's hard. I will say it's kind of hard to find like real, like real genuine friends and relationships in this space. Like it's been kind of, it's been kind of tough. Um, you know, I don't know. It's, it is what it is. Um, but like, you know, and I've gotten, I've had people like get mad at me over the, you know, be like, um, you know, I'm pretty strongly opinionated on certain issues and I've actually gotten people sending me like pretty nasty emails or nasty Facebook messages people I didn't really know like it's like so that's kind of why I don't accept Facebook friend requests anymore from like people in the industry or like in those circles uh you know like you know I, I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say you know and it is what it is some people like it some people are not you know, if that's, you know, if you don't want to associate with me over an opinion I have about uh, the sewing industry, that's, that's cool too. I totally, I totally get it. All right, we got Hillary here. All right. Uh, the drama is exhausting. Yeah, and it's like, there's always freaking something. There's just always something going on. I've got Deborah, Debbie here. I'm late to the party, but hello from Pittsburgh. Hello, Debbie. All right, making new dreams come true is here. Hi, Jen. Hi, everyone. Um... You know, another thing I want to touch on, too, is that, like, I, okay, so a couple examples, and again, I'm not going to name, not, I'm not going to name names, because I'm not, that's not, like, what I'm here to do, and, like, you could even say, like, hey, Jen, you know, you've brought up some things in the past, you know, and yeah, I have, you know, um, but I do try to, I really try to be mindful of that sort of thing if I'm, you know, I don't want, like, I don't want somebody's life to be ruined or for the mob to come after um, anybody. Like, that's just not, you know, like, especially not, like, individuals. Again, I, I will call out companies like Cricut all day long. I'll call out sewing machine manual. Like, I don't care about that sort of thing. Um, you know, um, like, a while back, I did talk about some weird, like, that weird situation I had with um, another business owner uh, coming to me and basically doing like the pick your brain thing, but like under the guise of like friendship. And I did talk about that. And the reason I wanted to talk about that was because that is a pattern I've seen over a longer period of time. And that was not the only example, but that's something I've experienced a lot is uh, just people like coming to you and like kind of acting like they want to be friends, but they really want, they want to do the pick your brain for business reasons. Uh, but the, they're kind of like trying to pretend it's like, you know, hey, we're just women. We got to help each other out. And uh, that pissed me off, frankly. And the reason I want to talk about that was because 
Um, it's happened to be so much, like so freaking much in this space where women will hit me up for business advice for free all the time. And I'm like, look guys, like I, you know, like, and, and let's think, I don't even really know the person, like we're not actually friends, but they, they think that's like okay to do. Uh, but I did not name the person, I did not name the business, so nobody knows who it is. I wanted to talk about that as an example of what has happened to me like many, many times, but without like doing the name and shame thing. And if I'm being totally honest, like I, I do a lot of product reviews and I'm, I'm, I can be a little bit brutal, uh, but I'm even kind of afraid to do like very brutally honest reviews of small indie pattern designers. Um, just because I feel like I, I feel like if I did that, I would be seen as some sort of online bully, and I don't even really want that either. But I, you know, I've had some hit or miss luck with the indie pattern companies, you know. So now I'm at the point where, like, if I run into, you know, if there's a pattern that I'm like, oh my gosh, this pattern kind of sucks, I'd almost kind of rather just never talk about it than give the person like a bad review. You know what I'm saying? Because then they'll be like, oh my gosh, she came after me. You know what I mean? Like, so like. I'm all, like, I will say this, I've, there are certain things I will kind of almost like censor myself or like not talk about because, like, because I have, I do have some sort of fear of like being, you know, being labeled as like the mean girl or being labeled as the person that's like coming after another small business. And I don't really want that either, you know, but a lot of people, and I, I've seen this critique quite a bit in the craft snark uh, subreddit is that like I think I do think that especially on Instagram a lot of people are afraid to say what they really think about certain indie pattern designers like indie pattern designs because they don't want to hurt the desi designers feeling so like the thing I see is that like the indie pattern designers have created this like paras parasocial relationship with the followers and with the community and that um, you know, because they feel that connection with the person, they're so afraid of like hurting their business or hurting their feelings that people who will make the pattern and have issues with it tend to sugarcoat the problems and not give like legit reviews because they don't want to burn the bridge. They're are, are so afraid of like, you know, be coming across as mean that they don't even want to give like honest reviews of patterns or products put out by like, uh, small like one person businesses and I do think there's like something to that it's like are you really doing a service to your audience if you're not giving like a a completely authentic review there's you could say that but then you also don't want to be labeled as a bully for like just you don't want to like destroy a person's business you know so sometimes you kind of have to like kind of tiptoe around that kind of thing because you know this is kind of a unique space and that you do have a lot of like indie um indie sellers like you don't just have like large corporations selling stuff you have a lot of like people like me who are just a small like one person business selling like patterns or selling you know like products or whatever and you kind of don't want people to you know you don't you don't want to be like responsible for wrecking someone's business which i totally get all right let's let me get some water here All right, we've got Hillary here. Welcome, Hillary. Always appreciate your takes on what's happening in the industry. Thank you very much. All right, Debbie, I stopped hanging with a knitting group and really don't knit much because of drama and polarized political views. Oh gosh, yeah, don't even get me started with the politics. I think we can all find, I think we can all find common ground and something uh, to encourage others. And I'll just say this right now. Um, the sewing report will never be a, pol this is a politics free uh, zone. I want everyone to feel welcome here. I don't want there to be any real like political talk. You know, I just think a lot of people want to sew and quilt and join groups like this or have a community like this to get away from politics. And I think that's completely understandable. Not everything needs to be political. I don't think sewing and quilting uh, do. A lot of people, we'll say a lot of people on Instagram are very political, and I think that's their choice. Uh, but I've I've made a conscious decision uh, that this is this is just going to be a 100% politics-free 
uh, zone. So I don't want to talk about politics. Uh, I don't really want to, you know, it's not why we're here. We're here to learn about sewing. We're here to talk about the sewing community. And I do, I do think that, I, and I personally prefer the groups that have a rule against talking about politics. I just think it can devolve so quickly into like, Ug complete ugliness and then it it kind of like when you involve politics in the group it turns every group into a dumpster fire immediately um so that's not what we're gonna be doing here so this is gonna be uh, a politics free uh, zone all right debbie we don't need to nitpick or deliberately uh, debate hot topics very very true all right, Lakisa, I think there is a wide line of actual sewing community people and people like me who just watch. I'm not posting or anything, so it's a different context. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if I... No, I see what you're saying, and that's the thing. Like, There are a lot of people like you who may not like be like an influencer. You're just someone who consumes content, and you don't really... You probably don't really want the drama. You know what I mean? Like, oh, excuse me. You're here to, like... You're here to make stuff. You're not here to, like you know, getting fights, like getting in online fights with people is like the worst. All right, Debbie, I think there is room for a women helping women situation in business, but it needs to be super organic and not forced. Exactly. Um, I've been helped by other women and I've helped other women. Um, but it was, you're right. Like it was like, we were like, that's the thing we were, our, we already had a relationship. Um, I think some people can be very transactional in this space. But what bothers me is that they will try to disguise that with like, like kumbaya friendship type vibes. You know what I mean? When they, when they don't actually want to be your friend. I do think there are a number of fake people in this um, industry and that, that bugs me. Like I don't, you know, I try not to be, you know, I, you know, I'm, look, I'm not perfect. I'm sure I've, I am sure I have made some missteps, um, no doubt. I'm sure there are people who don't, probably aren't really a fan, and that's totally fine. Um, you know, and it is what it is. I will say, like, a few years ago, I, I got, like, this lady reached out, and she, wa she was, like, a freelance writer for, like, Forbes or something, and she wanted to, to interview me about um, marketing in the sewing world. Um, I was pretty honest with her and I was like, look, I think a lot of these sewing businesses have like really outdated marketing techniques. I don't think they are appealing to young people. I don't think they are appealing to, um, you know, like they're like they, it's like they're still trying to market to like just the 1950s, like housewife types or something. And I think there's a lot more people besides like that group that might be interested in sewing. I was very honest about um, my feelings, but they were my actual opinions, you know, like I feel like a lot of sewing businesses market like it's the 70s. Um, after the article came out, I got a few like messages from people who like strongly disagreed and like that's fine, but they were really nasty about it. And I like I actually like, you know, I was like the one person w was in the sewing industry they work for. Um, they do work for like a sewing company and they had they had sent me a they had friended me on Facebook and like sent me a few messages and after that I was like defriend you know what I mean like you know if if you're gonna be like nasty and be like oh my god like they sent me like a whole freaking novel on like how wrong I was and how I missed the mark and they were really disappointed in me I was like get that get the freak out you know what I mean like uh, so like if that's the kind of person you know, that's like supposedly my Facebook friend. Like, I don't really need a friend like that. So I kind of just, I delete him. I was like, you know what, man, like, that's fine. But like, did you really have to write me like a whole novel about like how, you know, how terrible I am or whatever? So I've gotten a few of those, you know, and it's like, it is what it is. So, all right, Debbie. Uh, hmm, maybe if we find issues with patterns, I agree, Jen. We don't want to attack the small businesses Maybe they'll DM, email the designer uh, directly. I think one way around that too, I think there's a way you can like constructively criticize a pattern, like where you're like, where you could say, hey, I had issues with this particular part. Maybe I like found it hard to understand, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I think even that would like, I think even that 
could like upset the designer. Like these people, some of these people seem to have like a very thin skin for selling. I'm gonna I'm be real. I feel like a lot, a lot of these people have a very thin skin for any criticism. Um, like I've heard of them like deleting comments where someone was like, hey, you know, this didn't work for me or whatever. And I've personally purchased some like patterns off of Etsy where I was like, holy crap, this is pretty bad, you know? And what I find is I just never, like, I just never mention the pattern. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to talk about this on the channel. You know what I mean? Like if, if the pattern kind of sucks. Uh, but at the same time, like, I feel like, I feel like there are a number of pattern designers who literally can't take any degree of criticism. And I also think that's a problem. Um, that's why I don't sell patterns. Like I put out some free patterns, like free, they're like barely patterns. Um, and uh, you know, I, the reason I don't charge for them is one, because you know, like I don't want to have to, like, I feel like the, the level of scrutiny for paid patterns deserved, deservedly is much higher. You know, again, if it's free, can people really complain about it? Probably not. Um, like I've gotten people being like, hey, can you write a written instructions? I'm like, I, that wouldn't be worth it to me. Like the reason the pattern is free is because I'm, you know, there's a video tutorial. I'm good at video tutorials. For me, the effort I would have to put into like writing like out the patterns and coming up with like written instructions, you know, again, I would have to charge for it then and it wouldn't be free. And I, I just don't want to do that. I'd rather keep the pattern free and you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I, again, I think if you are charging, like I've bought a couple patterns on Etsy that like barely had instruct, like I was like for being a paid pattern, this is pretty chintzy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but what I end up doing is like, I feel so conflicted about like call, you know, like mentioning that designer by, you know, like that design and that company by name that I end up like not doing, I end up like not talking about, I'm like, yeah, it's just, this just isn't one to be, gonna be one I'm featuring. All right, I agree 100%. While I have political opinions, I don't want to discuss it in maker spaces. This is my happy space, Lil. Yeah, and honestly, guys, politics is such a depressing topic these days. I just don't, you know, I just would rather not talk about it. Uh, all right, we got Flay Leatherworks on Twitch. Welcome from Twitch. Thank you for joining in. I, I know this is against Twitch policy. We'll see if I get kicked off. I don't know. I am multi-streaming. So we'll see, like, we'll see what happens. I don't know, but Twitch, um, I will say Twitch's new policies towards creators are crap. And um, yeah, they I can't see why they would motivate anyone to try to build an audience on Twitch. I am streaming on Twitch because it's easy to do so. Uh, but I really, I, I really disagree with the Twitch policies on multi-streaming. I'll just say that. All right, making new dreams come true. I've joined and left several Facebook groups all because a lot of people just wanted to get followers on IG. Yes, like you be, oh my gosh. Like there's groups and all it is is like self-promotion. Like I was in, I'm in a Facebook group where people talk about PDF pattern, like sewing patterns. And all it is is like self-promotion for the person. Also, that kind of happens on a lot of subreddits too. And you're like, Jesus, like I just like don't need, you know, we get it. You sell PDF patterns. Like it's not people like naturally talking about patterns they like as customers. It's all like the designers themselves just trying to like pimp out their stuff. And that becomes like, you know, like a really like meaningless group. You know what I'm saying? All right, Denise, it's like in response to people who are freaking out like that. Hmm, that really sounds like more of a you thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I've gotten some nasty, I, I'm not gonna, you know, go into the details, but I've gotten some people sending or like emailing or messaging like these long ass novels, like basically just like ripping me apart. And I'm like, you know what? Delete, delete. I don't respond, I just delete. All right, making new dreams come true. I wonder if those pattern sellers ever test their patterns uh, before they release them. Now, some do, and some apparently don't do a very good job with pattern testing. Um, I've also seen some folks online talking about how a lot of pattern designers now, uh, they're basically looking for the pattern testers as like social media promotion. So I've seen some people say that the pattern designers will only pick people with like big social media followings, but who might not be the best 
at giving feedback to the pattern designer. So like, and some of the, apparently some of the like applications would be like, not only sewing the pattern or like giving feedback, but also like you must post your makes on social media. So I do think some pattern Uh, as a way to like create social media buzz instead of actually doing what it's meant to do, which is um, technical testing of the pattern and providing actual feedback on how to improve it. So there are some issues for sure. Okay, Debbie, I feel like serious pattern designers do have pattern testers and know that correcting and clarifying the first draft is just part of the process. Yeah, not, that's what I think differentiates the like the more amateur pattern designers from like the legit pattern designers is um, how much actually goes into the design process and then um, making changes as needed and some I think some do a better job uh, than others. All right Hillary a big designer group is notorious for quote unquote oh social media is hard let's all follow with engage with each other. Yeah I've I've definitely seen those groups before and I've actually been in one before with like a like a handful of people And let's just say it did not end well. Everyone ended up getting like upset with each other and like talking shit about them behind you. Like, and and, like, oh my gosh, he stole my blah, blah, blah. Like, and I was like, good God. Like, so I, I just have a hard time being a part of those types of groups. Um, You know, I don't know. You know, and that's the thing. Like, you know, I, I myself am not immune from getting caught up in drama um, and, but like that's the thing i kind of know that and i i kind of am trying to do what i can to stay out of it um which is why i don't really participate in like groups like that is because i just find they're just really you know it's just it can it can be very like they can just be very like toxic places so i don't know all right debbie i'm sorry wow jen i'm sorry you get attacked you are one of the most uh, transparent people i follow well thank you thank you debbie um you know, yeah, and you know, look, I'll be honest, like, if someone's really nasty, like, if someone's needlessly nasty in, like, the comments, I review all the comments myself and approve them. Um, I am an indiscriminate blocker. Like, I will block you if you're, like, a, a piece of crap person or if, like, you're being very passive-aggressive. If I don't feel like you're here in good faith, um, block, you're gone. You know, I'll just say that outright because I don't want this, I don't want my comment section to be a dumpster fire. And I also don't want to, um, I don't like the idea of rewarding negative behavior. Uh, So that's why I mostly just respond to like the positive comments. If someone's here to talk shit, like they don't, they don't really have a place here. They can do that somewhere else. Um, Make their own videos, which they won't because uh, the people who leave nasty comments, like they're never fellow YouTubers and they, they never make videos. They're always just like, they're always just like an anonymous person with a keyboard. So that's just kind of how it is. All right, Lakeisha M, I feel, I feel you. If an indie pattern companies have double digit price points, I need to see at least three people talking about it and someone making it on video. You know, that's a good way to go. Yeah, if, if a pattern has a video tutorial, I'm much more likely to buy, especially if I look the, look at the, video and I'm like okay I feel like I can do that because sometimes I'm like sometimes I'll be like yeah that looks impossible I'm I'm never gonna make this pattern all right Jamie is here Jamie welcome hi Jen I'm happy so happy to catch the live Jamie is a long time sewing report fan here thank you thank you Jamie so yeah I don't know I just I I just have a lot of thoughts on this and I don't know I just I've had some hair miss uh luck I just you know, sometimes dealing with people in the sewing space is exhausting and I just don't want to do it. So that's why I kind of don't, you know, I don't really engage a lot. Like I, I'll talk to you guys. I'll talk to people who are, um, you know, here in the comments or here in the live chat. But like, you know, I don't tend to like, sorry, my mic. Wow. So this thing with the mic is like getting really, it kind of like can get away from you. Uh, but yeah, I tend not to, I tend to be kind of weary about like, joining like groups, like especially like smaller groups of like sewing influencer types. Um, If you are a sewing influencer or if you want to talk, like I also recommend um, make friends who are like in different spaces. I find there's a lot less drama and you don't, you know, you don't have to feel as guarded about like, you know, your competitive stuff or whatever. 
you know, like I'm friends with people who make like different types of videos in YouTube. And you know, it's, it's a lot, I've just noticed it's a lot more chill. I'll just say that. I've also seen similar frustrations with other, um, with other spaces. So I know it's not just limited to sewing and quilting, but it's definitely a problem uh, with sewing and quilting. Man, I really need some water. Okay, there's a couple other things I also wanted to touch on. This is good news, very good news. Um, so a couple, like a week ago or so, I think I talked about Lily Ella Stitchery, uh, Nicole. Uh, Nicole had a very, very bizarre, oh, let me, sorry, I didn't bring this up. Okay, here we go. So in the last live stream, I talked about Nicole with Lily Ella Stitchery. She had a super weird situation with Instagram and she was locked out of her Instagram for over six months, which is super crazy. It was not her fault. She did not do anything wrong. And I talked to her for a little bit on the phone last week. Uh, she is, I, I don't normally have guests here on the channel. Uh, just again, more too much drama and too much headache generally, but um, I am making an exception uh, for Nicole. And Nicole, we're trying to work out a time for her to come on live and talk about what happened to her because her story, the whole thing was like super crazy. And I think there's a bigger discussion to be had here, but Nicole got her Instagram back thanks to one of her followers uh, whose husband works for Meta, the company that owns Instagram. So it took getting a Meta employee to get involved and she did get her account back, which is super exciting. But notice, yeah, like her last post was like around Christmas of last year and she had not been able to get into her account. She does have a backup, but if you are not following her, uh, definitely follow her. Uh, we, we've talked quite a bit. She seems like a lovely person and we have a lot to talk about. So I am trying to get her on Sewing Report Live, uh, hopefully next week. We're, we're trying to work it out, uh, but I'm really happy that she got her account back. Like this whole thing just totally like it wrecked her business. Like she was like really like very, very like, you know, depressed, which again, I can understand. And we have a lot to talk about, so I'm really happy. But if you're not already following Lily Ellis Stitchery, give her a follow. Also, she has a backup account. Let me get the backup account up. Um, uh, obviously that's, and I'm gonna be making a backup account as well, just in case something happens to sewing report, even though like I don't really have that many followers there. So like whatever, um, but she does have a backup account, the Lily Ellis Stitchery, uh, where you can follow her. But yeah, look how crazy this stuff is. Like she was locked up for over six months and she had a like quite a wild ride, but she is back. But if you don't already follow her, give her a follow and follow her backup account as well. So that's really good news, but I think there's still like, I think it highlights a very big problem with relying on social media for your business. Um, so we're gonna be talking about that because she has, she has a lot to say and I have a lot to say uh, because I think it's, I, you know, a lot of us in these, a lot of sewing and quilting people rely heavily on Instagram. Um, so, and look at like, I've seen so many I've seen so many people, not even in our space, but so many people in general report problems with Instagram, their accounts getting suspended or banned for no reason, and them not them getting locked out or getting suspended, and it's really insane. So go give her a follow, but I'm hoping to have her on live because I think this would be such an amazing, um, I think it would be such a great topic to talk about, and I think she would be an amazing guest. Uh, so we're, we're, we're trying to work it out. Uh, the other thing that is also an update from last week is that you can now register on the, um, wait, oh, this is, oh, wait, this is a different thing. Ah, what is going on? So Maker Place by Michaels, I got an email that they're going to start beta testing on August 1st. So that's in like a few like just in a couple days and uh, let me, okay, what are we doing here? All right, uh, I got so many tabs here. Okay, so I think this is the right tab. 
Um, so yeah, they're gonna start beta testing on August 1st. And I've signed up to like for the wait list, so I haven't gotten anything else yet. Uh, but Make Maker Place by Michaels is supposed to be like an Etsy competitor. Um, and they're kind of trying to boast that it's gonna be cheaper. So I don't know how good this will be, I have no idea. I signed up for the wait list. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give it a try, um, see what happens. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else has uh, seen this, but you know. And I don't even know. Like, will an Etsy competitor like can this even work? Who knows? Um, is it lost cause? I have no idea. But it's kind of kind of interesting. All right, let's uh, let's read some more comments here. All right. Okay, this is in response to. All right. Okay, we've got Denise. Wasting time with drama just takes away from craft, crafting time. Exactly. You know, I don't know. It's just, it's just nuts. All right. Thank you. Making new dreams come true. All right. This is in response to Nicole getting her Instagram account back. Yes. I'm Here's the thing though. Like it shouldn't have had to take what it took to get her account back. Like not very many people have access to Instagram employees. So I think that's crazy. I, you know, and we're gonna get into this because I have some, I have some, I gotta throw some, I'm gonna throw some shade at Instagram during this show because I've got some thoughts. I think, I think they need to make more tools for people on Instagram and make it possible for you to get real help when you have a catastrophic event on your account, like getting suspended. Her account has always been so inspiring. Yeah, her photography is amazing. Also, she's like a dancer too, so she, that's her other, like, you know, profession is she's a dancer. Um, she's very talented and I'm really glad I, I've gotten to meet her through this whole, you know, I guess maybe that's like a silver lining. Um, and that's the thing, like with Instagram is in particular, it can be really easy for people to get like lost in the shuffle. There are so many posts on Instagram all the time that I didn't even realize she had been suspended because I, you know, or yeah, her account locked because like I just didn't realize I hadn't seen her in a while. But then when she posted that, I was like, like she started following me and I, was, I went to the account and I saw that she'd been talking about getting locked out. And I was like, you know what? That's true. I haven't seen like, I haven't seen a post from her in a while, like what happened. But it's so easy to not notice it because there are just so many freaking people on Instagram who are always posting that you can kind of miss, like you can kind of miss people and stuff can fall through the cracks. So I don't know, that's what I got to say. I'm almost running out of water here. All right, we got war paint and unicorns in the house. Welcome. Welcome. She, you're a freaking frequent viewer. I got blocked from posting and DMing friends in three weeks time doing nothing in Instagram. It was super weird, but was back in 24 hours. Yeah, what is up with Instagram? I think they got to get their shit together, but there's like, there's some major problems. All right, uh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, I think, it's, you know, I would love to, I'm really looking forward to talking to Nicole. Hopefully we can work this out. But we are trying. And I've also been really encouraging her to do more on YouTube and some other places. Because um, I think the big takeaway you can get from this is to like, not just rely on one, like relying mostly on one social media platform, especially if you have any sort of business, is very risky. Heck, even relying on social media in general is, is just risky. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's turn the music back on. All right, we're gonna we're gonna groove out a little bit. And yeah, I did realize last week the music was a little bit loud, so I've turned down the volume. So hopefully it's not like super intense. But yeah, so that's what I want to talk about: drama, drama some social media stuff, make a place by Michaels. I know we're having fun, it's Sunday night. What's everyone doing this week? Anything, you got anything fun? I am taking, um, 
I'm taking J-Hop, the bunny, to the vet on Tuesday uh, for a checkup and to get her nails trimmed. She desperately needs it. So we'll be doing that. And hopefully she, um, hopefully she's not too traumatized. She doesn't really like, um, she's not, you know, I don't know. Bunnies traveling with them is a little bit tough. It's definitely a little bit tough. So that can be a little challenging. Also like getting her into the car and everything is a little bit, a little bit tough. I do have like multiple cameras tonight too. I haven't really used them. Um, but yeah, we've got like a pretty pimp setup here. All right, so we've got, we've got camera one here. Camera two, this is the overhead. So you can kind of see me monitoring stuff here, right? Man, this mouse pad's kind of dirty. This is what I use to control the live stream. This is uh, Stream Deck Mobile. Got camera three. Hello. This one, like, the coloring on it is a little, I couldn't get this cam, this camera setup's not the best. Also, like, the lighting, like, I look green, but, you know, whatever. It is what it is. And we've got, also got picture in picture. Haven't really needed this lately because we're just, like, talking about stuff. But this is, like, if we want to demonstrate something, you know, we've got, like, you can see me talking, but you can also see, like, close up over kind of an overhead camera. Uh, we like to keep it fun here at the Sewing Report. All right, Denise. All right, you're, you gotta go. Thank you for joining in Drama Free Zone. Gotta feed the, go feed the fam. Good luck at the vet. Thank you, Denise. All right, bye Denise. All right, Debbie, the International Bra Sewing Bee starts Thursday. You know, I've never, you know what? I've never sewn a bra before. Maybe this is the year to, I, I really want to try to do some clothes this year. Like, I've been really bad at it. That is something I would like to do. I'm also a very weird bra size, so maybe that would help me. I do have a tough time. The International Bra Sewing Bee starts Thursday. All in line, I've excited. I've only made one bra so far. Hey, that's one more than I have. All right, all right, baking. All right, bye, Denise. All right, and you'll be, okay, gardening. That sounds like fun. That sounds like fun. It's Sunday night. I gotta eat. Man, I'm hungry too. All right, here we go. Mary, all right. I feel like you're a new, you're new, new here. I haven't seen you before. Okay. Sorry, I've got some phlegm going on back here too. This is kind of gross. Appropriate criticism is an opportunity for continuous improvement in any business. I have been sewing for 53 years and love to learn. Sewing is a skill. Sometimes there are no shortcuts. You know, that is, that is true. Here's the thing though, like, I do feel like sometimes the more like OG sewists can be, can be like a bit harsh, but like not in like a constructive way to some of the younger sewists. And I feel like that's a little bit unnecessary, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I think there's a way to say something nicely to someone and also like, like with some techniques, there are multiple ways to accomplish the same thing. And I have seen some people like get all up in arms because someone wasn't doing it their way. So, I mean, yes, I would say sometimes there are no shortcuts, but I would say that in many situations, there are multiple ways of accomplishing the same thing without there being a difference in quality or result. And I think if, you know, you have to find the way that works best for you. So I, I tend to be, you know, a little more non-judgmental. You know, again, we might, you know, we could probably throw shade on the people like doing the hot glue gun clothes and stuff like that. You're like, that's not gonna last. And I do think there are some, there are some, you know, cringe TikTok accounts and Instagram accounts where like, like they're sewing, but they're like clearly, you know, you're like, eh, I don't know. But here's the thing, like some, you know, we could also say like, at least they're generating interest in the, the thing like, you know, maybe they're getting more young people interested in sewing. But on the flip side, to play devil's advocate, you could also say, like, is it really that helpful if they're showcasing all the wrong things? You know what I mean? Like, again, like the hot, like, don't, like, some of the no-sew tutorials are kind of laughable. It's like, you don't need to sew, just use a hot glue gun. I'm like, and... It kind of bothers me when some influencers are making stuff that just looks good for photos, but is totally impractical for real life. And you know it's not gonna last like five seconds in a real world scenario. That you're kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. But then again, like, I, 
I also don't feel like I'm going to like hate on someone specifically. I'll talk generally like, yeah, that's kind of cringe, but I'm not gonna pull up some random girl's TikTok and be like, look what she's doing, this is so terrible. Cause I don't wanna send like the mob after that person, especially for like no, you know, no real reason, you know what I mean? I think there's a point where you can criticize what's happening, but also like there's a line where you're just mean, you know what I mean? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Oh, so if anyone has anything else they want to talk about or, you know, maybe you saw something interesting. Um, oh, you know what? I do want to, you know what? Let's, I'm going to talk about this. Hold on a second. I got, we've got to talk about this. <clears throat> Give me one second. I got to find this because you guys are going to, you guys are going to flip. <clears throat> this kind of has to do with sewing like marginally, uh, but that's fine. <clears throat> all right. All right, I'm finding this, all right, let me, Man, they keep changing the price on this thing. Okay. Also, there's like way too many pop-up ads on this site. This is getting kind of crazy. Okay. Okay, so there is this story I saw. By the way, um, the New York Post is killing it with the weird stories um, in viral clickbait. All right, so this story is like one of the strangest things I've ever seen. And it kind of like... It mar uh, this is like very loosely associated with the sewing because this does have to do with making because it, um, it involves making a costume. So we're going to go with that. All right. So there's this guy in Japan who spent $14,000 uh, to transform himself into a Kali dog, like for real. So this Japanese guy um, apparently has always had this lifelong dream about living as a dog. So he hired this company, which by the way, the company did like an awesome job. This is the costume. And this is one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, check this out. Like when you look at this, does this looks like a freaking dog. Like you're like, it looks a little weird, but like it looks fairly realistic. And this was made by a company and this guy paid. Okay. Also, I've seen different prices. At first, the story said $20,000. Now it's down to 14, but then this line here says 12,000. So what is it? I don't know. So this guy spent 2 million won or yen, 2 million yen. And apparently that's like $14,000. Oh, here's another guy who spent $23,000 for a wolf suit. Oh boy. Let's look at that next. So, okay, the, here's the company that made, made the costume. And I was like, I was genuinely like super impressed with the craftsmanship. I mean, can we not admire this? Even though the story is like weird AF, um, you know, shout out to Zepit. I don't even know, I, it's like in Japan. I don't even know where this company is, but they crafted this dog model suit it cost, yeah, 2 million yen. It took 40 days and says, we custom made a dog suit for an individual client. The suit modeled after a collie pursues really in its quadrupedal locomotion. And I'm like, what in the heck? But like, this looks pretty freaking, this looks like a dog. I mean, parts of the body look a little strange, but like, this looks pretty legit. Um, so this quote unquote dog's name is Toko and uh, Toko has a YouTube channel with like over 30,000 subscribers and here I'll show you, hopefully we can play this without being copyright claimed, but the YouTube channel is like pretty crazy. 
I just have so many questions for this guy. I like, I, I have so many questions. Like literally, I'm just like, I don't know. All right. <clears throat> so the channel is called I Want to Be an Animal. We won't really. Oh, now they're up to 37K. Okay, so they've got 37,000 subscribers now. And I'll just sort of like preview the video, but this is kind of what it is. Like this is the person inside the costume. Okay, I have a lot of questions. Okay, how does how does he go to the bathroom? Like this looks this costume does not look comfortable. It looks really hot. I feel like I would get claustrophobic in the costume really quickly. How does he use the bathroom? Like, how often does he take the costume off? I did read somewhere that apparently this guy actually spends the night in this dog crate, which is really freaking insane. But, you know, hey. And then, it doesn't look very comfortable to walk in either. Like, if I'm being honest, this looks really hard. But like, is this not like one of the weirdest things? Yeah, look at this, Kali waving at you on a chair. I mean, hey, he's living his best life. He's, this is his dream. I mean, look, this is totally his dream. Okay, so, but here's my thing about, so I did read that this costume, it, like, apparently you kind of have to like, cause like, like a person's limbs are way longer than a dog's. And I heard that he's got to walk like with his, on his elbows and his knees, like for real. And I'm like, how can you even do that for a long period of time? Like, you might be able to do it for like a minute, but like after that, like, you know, how much would you really, I don't know, like, I'm just like, this is co so crazy, but uh, shout out to Zepit, the company that made the dog suit, because I was just really impressed by how good it looked. Again, I've got a lot of questions about the, um, the mental state of the, the person who's doing this, uh, but hey, he's living his best life. This is his lifelong dream. And you know, I don't know, like, I don't know. What do you, what do you think about this? Is this like, is this like next level furry? Also, let's look at that story about the guy who played, who paid even more for the wolf costume. I'm curious about that now. Like what, I'm, I want to see, okay. I paid, I paid $23,000 for my wolf suit. Now I'm free of human relationships. All right. Oh, this one is from earlier this year. We got a few of these guys. Okay, another Japanese person. Okay, so is this like a Japanese thing? Like, what is... Okay, Japanese engineer... Okay, uh, Toru... Toru Ueda likes to wind down from busy week like a drink. Okay, he has an obsession with animals. So is there something with Japanese people and having an obsession with animals? When I wear my costume, I feel like I'm no longer human. I'm free of human relationships, all kinds of troubles related to work and other things. I can forget about them. Okay, he had a suit made by Zepit as well. So Zepit, okay, so if you want to be a furry, okay, oh, sorry, I wasn't even, I don't even have that up on the screen. Okay. So apparently if you want to be a furry, Zepit is the place to go. Okay. I paid 23K for my wolf suit. Now I'm free of human relationships. Sorry, I didn't even have the article up. Okay, so this suit was 3 million yen or $23,000. Okay, yeah, that that looks like a wolf that he could be on like, uh, you know, True Blood or like Game of Thrones or something. Oh my gosh, okay, wow. All right, what do we think? At least this person doesn't have to like walk on his elbows and knees. Like, at least he's got that. Also, like, where are the eye holes? Like. And also, like, you can't see any zippers or anything, so how do they get in and out of this thing? I want to see a video of someone putting it on and taking it off. But, like, is this super creepy? What would you do if you saw this guy at, like, the park or something? Would you get freaked out? Okay, so that's him. Okay, at least this person is showing their face. The other guy wanted to be anonymous. Okay, he exchanged more than 40 emails with the team, and they had three face-to-face -face meetings in which he showed them images of his dream suit and finer details. I mean, this is like commission to the max here. So if we're talking about maker stuff. Like the pattern of the coat and the texture of the fur. Although he wanted the human size suit to be as realistic as possible, he also requested it allow him to walk normally. See, this guy's smart. He's thinking smarter. Oh my gosh, look at these children. They're like, what, what the F is going on here? I'm scared, mom. What is going on? 
Oh boy. They also produce replicas of people's pets. Okay, that's kind of cool, actually. Um, like, is this... What does this say about society that people feel the need to do this? Is this really... What does this say about us? Is this a level of, like, you know, like, what's going on here? Oh, well, this thing is, like, this cord thing is, like, really growing here. Is this super weird or is this, like, cool? Like, I don't know. Um... At least the guy in the wolf suit, though, can walk normally. The guy in the dog suit's walking on his elbows and knees. I don't get that at all. That has to be, like, super uncomfortable. Um, the other thing, too, is, like... Yeah, my here's my thought, though. The guy with the YouTube channel, the collie dog guy, with his YouTube channel with 37,000 subs, you know, the ad money probably paid... You know, I guarantee you, that guy has already paid for the dog costume with the ad money from YouTube. So... Maybe that's also a smart move, too. Um, you know, he used the YouTube channel. I, I'm guessing he's monetized. Uh, they're using the YouTube channel uh, to pay for this dog costume. Also, like, how do you clean it? How, like, how easy it is, is it to take on and off so you can go to the bathroom? Also, like, how do they eat and how, how much of the day are they wearing this thing? Like, the guy in the dog costume made it sound like he was wearing it, like, most of the day and while sleeping. And I'm like, that's just... Like, I just can't imagine how uncomfortable that would be. But I will say this, though. Maybe there's something to it, because both of these guys were Japanese, and I do watch Asian TV shows. Asian TV shows and media do have a, like, very unusual fixation with animals. Like, there are a lot of shows with, like, people hybrid, animal hybrid, like, people animal hybrids, or, like, the chimeras. There's a lot of shapeshifters. So maybe that's kind of what is um, also sparking all of these people to grow up and develop like this weird obsession with animals. Like maybe there's something to it. Like, but there's a lot of Asian TV shows that have people slash animal combos or people who turn into animals. Like there's all kinds of shows. You can get real freaky real fast. So maybe there's something to it. I don't know. All right, let's read some more comments here. Okay, war paint and unicorns. Uh, same in the cosplay community. You, you, sure, you can hot glue everything, but the days outside on the hot pavement means your costume is going to be thrown in the trash later. Lol. And that's, you know what? It's like, that's where like sewing and making can turn into like fast fashion. Like, if you're not making anything good enough to last like more than one wearing, it's kind of wasteful, you know? Hot glue gun sewing, I've seen that in the embroidery community when making tutus. I just say yikes to myself. Yeah. All right. Uh, cosplay goals. The Jim Henson company would be very happy with the shading and the fur. It looks pretty good. Like, it looks like a real, like, those look like real animals to me. I don't know. I think they did, you know, hats off to Zeppet for the craftsmanship. Uh, fur suits are very hot. Any person wearing a mascot knows. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. Like, that just looks... Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a whole other level of dedication that I just don't have. I think it's a bit strange, but if that's what they want to do, the costume looks realistic and well-made, yeah. I just have some questions. I got a lot of questions, particularly about the bathroom situation. This one probably have a cooling vest in it, mostly Velcro closures. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I don't really know how the... You know, I want to see if maybe this company has a, a YouTube that they, like, show the making process. I would be really interested in that. Let me just check real quick. Let's see if they have a YouTube. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't think so. <clears throat> but there is a person, apparently, okay, apparently there's... Apparently, they're not the only ones that are doing this, because I'm finding channels from other people who have realistic animal suits. Okay. Okay, yeah, you don't clean it. Spot cleaning the fur and let the clothes you wear under it soak up the sweat. Ugh. That sounds kind of nasty. This is why you wear mascots for events only, yeah. I, you know, I don't know. And, like, is there anything, like, more, like, you know, I don't know, weird about this whole fetish? I don't even know, but... 
if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I do find it interesting that both of those people are Japanese. Maybe there's something to it. I don't know. Um, I'm Asian. I don't have like a fascination with becoming an animal. Maybe I should be. I don't know. I did watch, K I, I watched like five minutes of a K-drama about a graphic designer lady who falls in love with a rescue cat who turns into a man and I just couldn't do it. I was like, this is too, this is too strange. Um, I'm out. I peaced out of that show. I was like, I, I can't do it. But there have been some shows with like shapeshifter, like um, like there were a lot of shapeshifters on that TV show True Blood, like the guy that um, there was that L Seed guy that turned into like the werewolf, and then there was um, the other guy that could turn into like animal Sam or whatever. So like the shape shifting thing, you know, is is pretty popular, I guess. Uh, who knew there were so many people that wanted to be like animals and stuff? I don't even know, guys. That's not. Not really my thing, but you know, it is what it is. All right, guys, I'm probably gonna take off pretty soon. I gotta, I gotta eat something. I might heat up a, might heat up like a frozen pizza. We'll see. I think that sounded pretty good right now. Uh, but I hope everyone enjoyed this live show. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And if you have not already subscribed to Sewing Report Live, please do so. This channel is not yet monetized. I would greatly appreciate it. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers here and uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying. I'm working, I'm live streaming. We're trying to get some good, good topics here. Uh, but let me know what else you would like to see here on Sewing Report Live. Anyways, I am Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next one. And remember, whatever you're doing, 